Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of RPG Radio. My name is Winback and I'll be taking you back to Diablo 4 today to see the first world boss, Ashava the Pestilent. World bosses are huge boss raids that are possible in an action RPG very similar to something you may have seen in Lost Ark already, except with a Diablo flavor that everyone truly loves. Big demonic butthole in the middle of the map down Ashava has popped out already snapping people who are standing in front of her. She is going to one-shot you if you're a little bit tiny. So, playing our big beefy barbarian lady, as is tradition, we're not gonna die. This is a deathless Ashava run. And this is the first time, actually, this is the first time in the uh, early access that I attempted this boss. I had two buddies on Sorcerers with me as well, and they were super helpful in dealing damage, but they did get smacked quite hard quite a few times because Ashava can literally one-shot squishies. I'm pretty sure any world boss is going to be able to do that, but barbarians just have it easier being beefy, being barbarians, being belligerent in the best ways. So, my build is the same build that I really had the best time with throughout the uh, entirety of the early access and the open betas of Diablo 4, and that is going to be Leap on our uh, one slot. We have got Death Blow on number two, Kick on number three. We've got, uh, I want to say it's Hail of Iron. I could be wrong though. Uh, that's our ultimate the basically Kratos blades on our our ultimate ability. We've got Fury for our default basic attack, and we have got Lunging Strike for our right click for more mobility. The Barbarian is absolutely plentiful in mobility, and it is crazy how good it is. Gotta whack those tiny little toesies for Ashava the Pestilent. Nobody really tried to break her limbs. I don't know if they ditched that option um, on the release of uh, this, because I know for a lot of the promotional material for Diablo 4, um, you could you could like break the bones off of her arms, and she would uh, basically hinder her ability to deal damage. But nobody was doing that. Everybody was going for the toes or staying super, super far away, dealing ranged damage. So dodging all those big, bad uh, circles of damage is is a lot easier when all you have to do is stand under those teeny little toesies. It is a blind spot for her huge swiping AoEs, so you dodge basically half her kit right there. Um, as she drops in health, you can see the little uh, triangles up top there on her health bar. Once you hit one of those, she will spew out a bunch of potions. So, if you have been chugging pots just to stay alive, uh, you suddenly now have the ability to, ooh, just like me, right here, just absolutely had to, had to drink three of them immediately to survive the, uh, the big slap from her, uh, from her cleave, which is gross. Now she's taking out people under her feet. She's really upset, really particular about her toesies. But as far as my build goes, when it comes to everything that you can do with the Barbarian, Deathblow is probably the biggest form of damage that we can deal to the boss. Because we picked up the modifier for Deathblow that lets it deal double damage. Did we dodge it that time? Nice. You can go directly under her taint to dodge the backward swipe. Uh, but Deathblow was dealing massive amounts of damage. Our ultimate also dealing pretty decent chunk of damage. Uh, but since it's on a 60 second cooldown, obviously the DPS is going to be much less. Ah, oh, just eat. There's all my health, my shields, and my fortification. All my pots are gone now, so I. She's pretty close. She's pretty close to another notch that's going to drop us a whole bunch of potions. Let's hope that we can bring her down quickly and get those. This is really one of the best parts about the um, the world boss mechanic in Diablo 4. It's so big, there's so many players. It's got that MMO feel, but it has the action and it has the, the heart of an action RPG 
And it's got some pretty spooky elements in there too, because you never know when you're going to get one shot and die, or if you're going to get hit very close to death like we did multiple times in this video. But, back to the build. So, uh, being that death blow and our, uh, oh man, our ultimates are going to be most of our damage, uh, the rest of our kit is focused mostly around survival and mobility. Leap, we have we have some special gear uh, affixes that are helping us use Leap more often as well. Leap also deals damage in uh, Diablo 4. Unlike Diablo 3, Leap isn't uh, isn't a sleeper button anymore. Uh, we've also got Kick. Kick comes with two charges, and the affix that I was talking about lets Kick uh, reset the cooldown of Leap. So. As long as you hit somebody with kick, you get the cooldown back on leap, and that is ridiculously helpful because, I don't know if you can tell or not, but there's been a lot of times in this fight that we've just been pegged by a random punch or swipe that we were not prepared for, and that spacebar dash does not go as far as uh, it really needs to. Dodged the swipe with the leap as well, jumping over her back saying, poo poo on you. See you later. And she's just gonna do it right back and dodge my total ultimate, so it's cool, whatever. Kit for Tash. Now, Fury is, um, it's actually incredibly helpful in this build as well, because not only is it keeping our, uh, our Fury meter completely generated, like the more full that it is, the more damage that we're doing uh, because of passives in the build, but uh, Fury is, er, Frenzy, Frenzy, sorry. Frenzy is, is keeping our attack speed high. It's let us dealing, letting us deal damage in between our big cooldowns. And then after that, uh, when the leap is down, when kick is down, we have lunging strike, which just lets us right click on enemies at a distance, and our barbarian will zip directly to them. This build was super, super good for this fight. I was really hoping to kill her before she before she uh, feet swinged, but at least we killed her before she punched us directly in the dome piece. Man. And she just drops a whole bunch of legendaries and she drops her spoils, which are full of even more stuff. It was a pretty quick, pretty quick go through, all things considered. Look at that, all of that legendary loot. This is going to be a common thing for world bosses, Diablo 4. But that's it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a quick one, but there'll be more D4 on the way until its release in June, early June. Can't wait to play the butt off of this game. Peace out, everybody.